The atmosphere is electric. The crowd is responding. As was said earlier, it's a bout that has great and epic proportions. 22 wins, two losses, no draws, seven knockouts to his credit. Richard Shrimpy Clark carries the hopes and aspirations of Jamaica, hoping to become another of the Jamaican world champions. Shrimpy, of course, wanting to follow in the footsteps of Mike McCallum, Trevor Burby, Simon Brown, Lloyd Honeygun, and to become the first homegrown world champion. And we look to the dressing room as the champion, the Ali of the Orient, Satsitalada of Thailand, making his way towards the ring. The flag of Thailand leading the way. The WBC flyweight belt held aloft by the manager trainer. The moment of truth is at hand. The wait is now over. And the flag of Thailand is held aloft. And entering the ring now is Satsitalada of Thailand. The crowd gives them a good ovation. He looks businesslike, he looks awesome. Shrimpy Clark looks skilled and ready to roll. Jamaica's national the anthem. playing of the Jamaican national anthem.
getting set for the big one, Hank. I'm sure that with emotions running so high, both you and I are quite nervous tonight. And now, and Leroy, I'm sure you share that sentiment of nervousness. Well, I wouldn't say nervous, Ali. It's more expectation. It's a moment of expectancy for Jamaica. We have never had a local grown champion. All our champions have been nurtured in the USA. Simply, if he does it tonight, will be a homegrown champion. And that is what it is all about. Several others have failed. Bonnie Grant failed. Percy Hayes failed. And those were two greats in Jamaican boxing. Now we're hoping that Simply Clark can do it. And I think he has an excellent chance. Fighting out of the what are your feelings, corner. man? Well, this, this fighter comes in at 110 Moody. and one half pounds. Is he is a former WBC the culmination of many years of hard work as well for Shrimpy Clark? Many years in the gym reads, 22 of wins, toil seven of those wins by and hard work. Against two losses. And tonight and it's going to come all down to a WBC's number one the, contender. The bottom line of whether Shrimpy Clark. Champion or not. There we see Shrimpy being acknowledged the by the crowd here, a very corner. enthusiastic crowd. The pace is not sold out, but it is pretty near to being sold out. Wins. And a very enthusiastic losses, audience, who I'm sure knockouts. would like to be able to be cheering Both Shrimpy as the WBC champion over the, the next four to five minutes. Well, WBC it's just a matter of time. Of the, world, the moment of truth is now being, a, being introduced. A mixture of chairs and booze, as one would expect. I'm sure he expects this, being oh, yes, in the hometown of the challenger. The surprise is that he's getting chairs, but it shows the Jamaican sportsmanship, Ali. Jamaican people are sports people. You can't say that Shrimpy Clark hasn't been nurtured properly. It was like building blocks. They his management took one step at a time. And this is what we're seeing tonight is Shrimpy Clark at the last step, to the final step. And that hopefully will be the world championship. So Richard Shrimpy Clark, 27 years old, has 24 fights, 22 wins, two draws, two defeats rather and seven nice. knockouts to his credit. Shrimpy the is moment in the of Jamaican colors of yellow trunks, black with green trunks. Titulada in the white trunks with the green trim. Titulada's record, 22 wins, two losses, one draw with 13 knockouts to his credit. And he is a slick boxer indeed. That close range is where Shrimpy Clark doesn't really want to be. Chitalada coming into this fight, the 75 favorite. He regained the title last September after losing it to Yang Kang Kim. That was in September of 1988. He's been an inactive champion, but over the last year or so, he has had a couple of fights. Clark looks very focused. Nice left jab for the first time there, Ali. He's been throwing and missing. But he's not getting close. And Sot is trying to get that right hook across. That's the punch which he likes to throw, Ali. That short right hook to the body and the head. There he got it to the body. Well, Chitalada, known as a brawler, but does possess a good boxing skills as well. And also does possess tremendous power in both hands. And that is what Shrimpy has to do to win. Snaking that left jab. That's the key thing for Shrimpy, that jab. He has to keep going. A beautiful left hook from Shrimpy. Another beautiful jab. That is what he has to do to win. And he's going. Clark has to keep that left jab in his face as he's doing. It's beautiful. And anything the basically he does, the crowd is going to react. And rightfully there so. There it goes again. Because Clark, his jab is pinpointed from right on. There's the Chitilada right though. That's his bread and butter punch. 
There's the chopper guy. Tittalada becoming a little more intense now as the first round wears on. Clark still quite focused. And Ali, as you might notice, Clark is very relaxed. Very clever piece of defensive work there. He caught Chitilada's glove, pushed him away slightly, and then threw that left side. He has to keep him off balance, and one can see it work. I think what's happening here, Leroy, is that both these men will find, perhaps in the next round or so, as they are finding out in this first round, that they have never fought anyone of the, the talent of each other. That was a very so good round. So the end of the swing. first round. No doubt about it. Definitely shrimp class wrong. Absolutely no doubt. Ali Shrimpy is showing me a very strong sense of maturity. He's very much under control. He's jabbing, keeping his men off balance and away. And not only that, uh, but he's very much aware that the other guy is a, a strong two-fisted puncher. He's very much aware of that because he's staying at a, at a very comfortable range. But I think Shrimpy will, will get into the fight more and more as the, round, as the fight progresses. And I also know that Chitalada will get in the, into the, the fight. Definitely. Chitalada is a very dangerous overhand right-hand puncher and a very sneaky uppercut right-hand puncher. Now that's and this Clark is what Shrimpy has to worry about. You know, Clark's is very confident. I hope he doesn't get complacent. He has to remain tightly focused if he's going to win. Well, Leroy, uh, if he is to win this fight, he's going to have to fight it like the very first round. Oh, yes. Uh, we remember of a couple of years ago when he did fight uh, Armada Osua, and it was a similar type performance. Yes, no doubt Now, this round is very important from a Chitalada end. He's going to try to reassert some kind of dominance because the psychological battle was And you notice that holding hitting. and hitting. You do holding and hitting. And right up Chitalada always does that. But of course, Tony Perez told him, none of that rough stuff, none of that dirty stuff. I was very happy, Leroy, to see that Tony Perez brought that. Yeah. Tony Perez is one of the best in the business. He has had 70 world title fights. No doubt about it. And there is Shrimpy with the jab once more. And a very nice defensive work from Shrimpy. He slipped onto that. Leroy, that left hook that such a lot of throws is, is strong, but it's wide. Yes, it and, is. Uh, Shrimpy is, I'm sure, is watching out for that. Oh, yes, no doubt about it. Well, so far, Shrimpy has been really keeping his, uh, and his he's hands making his face. Out of miss. Right. And if you'll notice, Ali, Shrimpy is keeping his right hand close to his chin, high, and guarding for that wide left hook. That has been one of my concerns with Shrimpy. He has always kept that left hand low. So I'm really pleased to see tonight that he's keeping it high. Because that hand from Chitilada. A good defensive work, he didn't allow Chitilada to bully him there. And that is something Larry Kent has been working with him on there. To make sure that Chitilada doesn't use the dirty stuff. Yes, on him. Right. He's been, uh, and one can see. Left hand high. Yes. Well, Chitilada is trying to bully him right now, trying to force him in, force opening. Well, this is the type of fight that sits a lot of fight. That was a slip. A bit of a slip on the punch. Oh, well. With a bit of a slip on the punch. And that, Lada certainly does have power. Yes, that right he's to going the to body. try to do that. that. Right to the body. He's strong, Ali. Every punch he throws is a home run. Oh, yeah. Oh, this yeah. guy don't... Uh, he's a world champion, and he's in here to do his business. And you can see that uppercut. Yeah. He's a throwing him maker. And there you saw Hank, that he, he, he changed to the, in a split second, went to the South Power uh, he, stance. He's capable of doing that, Ali. And he nearly caught Shrimpy yeah. with that left hook. Right. 
But that was another good round by Shrimpy. I thought he That's did well good. in terms of his defensive posture, and he right. kept that, uh, that left jab right, right in the face of Chitalada. Exactly. As we look to the corner of Shrimpy Club, we see him there looking quite relaxed. Perhaps more, more relaxed than we are here watching the fight. It's amazing, Ali, that Shrimpy is really this relaxed. Uh, this little kid from Kingston, Jamaica, is cool as a cucumber. And this is what, this is a very big attribute for him in tonight's fight against the guy who's considered to be one of the greatest fighters in the world today. One thing though, Hank, he can't afford to relax too much. I just see, to use a baseball term, Chitalad is trying to hit home run. He's really trying to take Shrimpy out. But luckily, Shrimpy's defense has been... So here is together. round three. There again, he was digging to the body. And he's digging the right to Shrimpy's body, and that will hurt. I think he, there we get the rough stuff. And he's trying to get Shrimpy to come in and work at close. Notice that there. overhead right, right. that arc-like that arc -like right hand. Right. That's what you a lot of throws. It's a very sneaky punch. Right. And he likes to come out of his out of his rumbles with that uppercut, yeah. Leroy, every yeah. time. He's trying to draw Shrimpy into a, a street fighting type yeah, the uh, situation. This is what he's trying. But Shrimpy has got to stay be, calm. Be disciplined. We must be disciplined today. Sot is trying to keep it at close range. Chitalada certainly is a brawler, and he certainly knows how to apply certain pressure. There was a low one, a very low one for Chitalada. He caught it on the knee, though. Yeah. Ali, I see Shrimpy taking the fight to Sot Chitalada. That's kind of surprises me at this early stage of the fight. I figured this would happen yeah. around about six, seven rounds. Right. I thought he would be the boxing master for a few rounds. And Perhaps he has seen something we haven't, but I think it's a little early, wouldn't you say, huh? Yes, it is. And allow the tie to wear himself out a little bit. Especially in this heat. A beautiful left hook cross. Beautiful left hook cross. Another left hook. Another jab. keeping that jab in the face of Chitalada. He doesn't want to mix it up with Chitalada at this stage. It's too early for him to do that. I think so. He he counted. That was the most beautiful left-hand counter. He stepped to the right and countered very well, Hank. Yes. Chitalada's left hook tend to be quite low. It just borderline sometimes and uh, a well, little that's, low. That's the way of most brawlers. They, they think very little of defense because they think their offense is, the, is the, their best defense. And while that is axiomatic in boxing, uh, in this particular case against a boxing master like, like uh, Shrimpy Clark, it might be dangerous. And Shrimpy is landing the jazz, but Chitalada is going in close and throwing those roundhouse right and left to the body. Clark tucks in that defense, so they're not getting to the body. But I'm sure they are very... And there he is. Tossing. And I'm, I'm a little bit surprised that Tony Perez is allowing uh, Chitalada to turn Clark yeah. that way. Right. I thought he would have at least caught him. There we get the third tactics once more. Yes, now we're getting that Leroy. And so the end of that round and Clark. There we saw some of the dirty tricks that Chitalada uses. And surprisingly, he was allowed to get away with some of it by Rick Nonetheless, Rick. Leroy, I thought that I, I'd have to give that round to Chitalada. Yes, that was Chitalada's best round, and he definitely won that one. However, oh, Leroy, I see a cocky uh, there. And I think he should continue his disciplined style of boxing. Definitely. I think he should stay outside and not go in and go with Chitalada. He don't need the danger zone because all he's doing, Leroy, is fighting Chitalada's fight. Right. Well, he certainly did that in the last round. And uh, having seen three rounds now, uh, now uh, it, it has convinced me that if Clark was able to maintain what he did in the first two rounds, he will come out a winner. Absolutely. He's, but he's now allowing he's Chitalada. To, to manhandle him, as they would say. 
Well, the start of round four. The WBC flyweight championship oh. at stake. Sacha Talado of Thailand up against Richard Shrimpy Clark. Did you see that beautiful left hook on the chin that Shrimpy Clark connected to on Chitalada? It was a lovely one indeed. Beautiful. Chitalada caught him with a very nice left hook. And the crowd trying Shrimpy to lift has him. has to stay outside. He can't it. afford to go in and draw. Because there is Chitalada as the master. Inside the jab takes its toll. Inside Chitilada's hooks to the body and the head take their toll. So Shrimpy has to stay outside. I'm sure it looks to me so far, Leroy, that Larry Kent has told Shrimpy to stay out of the danger zone. Yeah. Fight him in and out. Throw your throw throw your shot and get out out of range. Yeah. It's a classic case of boxer against puncher. Right. And is making for a rather interesting right. contest. Right. Chitalada over the past round has imposed his will on Shrimpy. And it's a question now of what Shrimpy can do to regain the initiative. Right. That was the last. That was the last round, Ali. But not this round. Shrimpy is staying. There he's oh, holding he's and hitting. And countering beautifully. And he's covering well. He has not forgotten his defensive mode. Right. Remember and he's not being suckered into the ropes like Chitalada would like. Right. Remember, the best punch of this round so far has been thrown by Shrimpy when he connected at the early seconds of the fight when he caught Chitalada with a beautiful left hook. Beautiful jabbing <laughs> by Shrimpy. Shrimpy's make a mistake here of going against the ropes. He but has he's moved himself off the ropes, off the ropes yeah. and covering well as Chitalada tries to punch through the ropes. This. That one glanced off the chin. A very, very beautiful contest. And Chitalada, no doubt, is a master inside. No doubt about it. And he knows how to use the rules to his good effect. He spins Clark, but uh, it's, not a, it's not as bad as to warrant a warning. Right. But here's Clark with a counter right. right. Beautiful. That was a very well executed right hand lead. Ooh, and that's he a good left hook. That's right beautiful left hook. Should be caught a beautiful well, left hook. Beautiful, beautiful left hook. Right. But however, Ali, it was a glancing punch I was doing from up to down. It wasn't. It wasn't really. Straightforward, and I'm happy. For, I'm happy huh, that that blow landed on Shrimpy. Why? Because it. I wanted him to feel the punch of uh, the power of Chitalada, right. so that he can say, "Yes, I can take it now and get down to the business of boxing." Yes, it could be very beneficial to him in the rounds to come. I agree. Not that he should take any more, mind you. <laughs> no, of course not. Nonetheless, it's been a rather interesting bout so far. And another round, I think, I would give to Shrimpy. Just marginally, though. It's been a classic fight between boxer and, and brawler. And these are what great fights are made of. Well, with all the excitement and fanfare leading up to this fight, it certainly is living up to all the pre-match billing. We're getting set now for the start of round five. Richard Shrimpy Clark carrying the hopes of Jamaica on his shoulders up against the pride, the alley of the Orient, Satchitalada of Thailand. And he, he went below the bed there the time that left the alley. And there's no doubt. He is a very tough fighter. Clark is going to have to keep that left jab in the face of Chitalada and withstand any of the close-range tactics which he has been trying to employ. Ali Shrimpy has one of the best jabs in boxing, the cleverest feet in boxing. All he should do is jab, keep jabbing this guy, keep him off balance, keep him frustrated, and uh, I'm afraid he's, he's, he's willing just did. And he got the better of that. I hope that yes, doesn't give did. him too much confidence yes, he to, did. to do that, because he can't do that with a brawler. Well, it shows his versatility, Ali. Well, he does have excellent hands. Yes, the kid is, has a lot of great talent, but one must be very cautious. And that was Beautiful an excellent 
colour nation. But Citalada weathered it well and came back with a right hand of his own. Beautiful counterpunch by Citalada there. And Clark has to be careful that he's not lulled into a trap there by Citalada. Remember, whenever you start an offense like Shrippy just did or just delivered, you are in a position to get retaliated by a vaunted puncher like Sacha Delada. And Shrippy should maintain caution all the way through. He has to be careful. I think Chitalada is trying to lull him, yes. to pull him towards him, and then try to catch him as he comes in. So well, he experienced boxers uh, like Chitalada realize and learn very quickly that if he stays on the outside, he's going to be beat by Shrimpy. So he has to draw him into, into making mistakes. No doubt. There's no doubt that Chitalada is a great fighter. And one can see his tactics. He's thinking, and one can see him setting traps for Shrimper there. Leroy Sacha Delata was voted by experts as one of the great fighters of the, a decade of 1980. And there's got to be a reason for that. No doubt about he's, that. He's a very dangerous two-fisted puncher. Clark missed with a very nice try. Beautiful jabbing by Clark, beautiful jabbing. Excellent jabs by That's Richard That's what Shrimpy Clark, Clark has to do to him. Those jabs. And I dare this say, maybe I'm a little early, um, uh, Hank, but I think that Citalada is now giving Shrimpy the respect uh, I think he deserves. He's not as brawling and as aggressive as he was earlier. For most of that round, I agree with you. He was. But the last few seconds, he kind of opened up. But no question in my mind, that was Shrimpy's round. Yes, I think Shrimpy won that round. He jabbed very decisively. I agree with you. Very decisively. Not only that, I tried to lure him in, but I think he counted it very nicely. And we're seeing on the slow-mo now, where, where Sot went to the body, Clark went in very nice defensively, tied him up, and stopped with a hand behind the head there, Ali. Which is something he does quite frequently, and then throws while he's holding And Leroy, I'm, I'm, I'm quite impressed with Shrimpy's performance, despite the outcome, uh, what it may be uh, so far. I think that uh, having gone to Larry Kent, has helped him a world of good. I've done him a no world doubt of about good. That. Amazing, amazing change in Shrimpy Clark. There we Confidence have alone, Ali. You see, Chitalada tried Confidence to... alone. He tried to trip Shrimpy yeah. with that right. move a moment ago. Well, the experience of referee Tony Perez uh, coming to the fore then. There's no doubt that Chitilada tried. The longer the, the fight Lost goes, him. Leroy, the longer the fight goes, it will be to Shrimp's advantage. What with the conditions that we have here in Jamaica, yes, no humidity and otherwise. No doubt about that. Well, I don't know about that, Mr. Uh, McMahon, because uh, such a Chitilada comes from a hot country too, and I think he's used to the heat. And. Uh, you know, he's been training in that, in, in, in those, in that type of environment as well. So I don't know about the uh, advantage. Sot landed a very nice left hook a moment ago. Come on! The shrimp is very, very focused at this point in time. Well, I think he, I, I believe Leroy is still respecting the power of Chitalada. Oh, and he ought to. to. He has to. If he doesn't, he's going to be in a lot of trouble. He can't get careless. No doubt about it. He has to stay in there. So this man is a champion. opponents in, in eight rounds, so he, he does have power up until that time. And there's Sot tried to... And I'm surprised he didn't draw a warning from the referee on that occasion. Yes, I'm, I'm rather surprised Tony Perez is taking a very lenient approach to the things that Chitilado is doing. 
Twice he tried to trip Frimpy. Deliberately tried to trip him. You know, and I think at least Perez should have given him a caution there. Don't forget, Leroy, such a gelato is a throwing baller and bullying habits come, you know, second nature to him. Now, this is his style of fighting. He takes the fight to the opponent. But that's what a referee is there for. And he must step in and say, hey. Oh, yes. The rules don't allow that. Oh, yes. Let's not go. Of course. Of I think Clark has covered up well. Oh, and, and Clark shook him with that left. Definitely shook him with that left hand. Yes, his knees buckled more in terror. No doubt about that. Another couple of very stiff jabs from Simpleton. The jab has been the main weapon for Clark all and evening. It has to be. Sub landed a very you nice trade. Have Leroy, that Trimpy has been backing up the tie this round? Trippy is very, very confident of what he's doing. That is what he has to do to me. He has to back him up. Well, we're at the halfway mark, Hank, and my scorecard, which is very unofficial as well, has given Citalada only one round so far. One distinct round is all I can see. Trippy Clark has been the boxing master. Uh, Sat Citalada has been the bully boy. And most of his, his solid punches are missing. His, his left hooks are wide and missing uh, trippy. And his, his arc-like right overhand right is going over trippy's head. His, le his right uppercuts are missing completely. I don't see any solid punches by Chitalada. And I would agree with you that trippy clock is winning this fight, predominant in this fight. So... Well, no however, I cautioned him. against Trimpy being too... Too aggressive. Too aggressive and, and too uncareful. He has to stay outside and score with the jab. The jab is a very productive punch for him, and this I think he should use. There is Chitalada holding and hitting a very nice short uppercut from Chitalada. And there is a master inside. No doubt about it. At close range, Chitilada. That short uppercut is excellent by yes. Chitilada. Oh, yeah. And it did get the attention and respect of Clark. Excellent, Clark excellent and dangerous, Ali. Oh, and that right glanced up. But it did hit the, the, the cheek of uh, Clark. Has to get that left jab established once again. And that's what he's doing. Beautiful. Very that pinpointed. A Beautiful. lovely jab indeed. Beautiful. The jab is acting as a... As a Offensive weapon as well as a defensive weapon for Shruby Clark. It's, it's the punch that's opening up Sacha Tolada for all Shruby's other power punches. He's landing that jab. The jab is controlling the entire fight. It has okay. to be the punch that he has to win. There's no reason for Shruby to come inside at all and score. Jab, and he will win this fight comfortably. Shruby must be incessant with that jab. Got to keep the guy off all night. Left hook, beautiful. Two beautiful lefts and right. Oh, the right hand and left hook combination, beautiful. And the jab back again oh, in his face. Right. Right. Chitalada looks a little bit confused at this stage. Yes, he and does. There's that right up and go down. Here we go. He spins him around and he hits him. And again, back. Tony Perez giving him the eagle at the but nonetheless, nothing has happened. I think by the next round, Hank, we're going to see Citalada coming out in, in a state of desperation because I see a little bit of it at the moment because he realizes that what with the crowd... Oh, wow, beautiful yeah. job. Excellent. Beautiful job. I, I don't know if it'll be in the next round, Ali. As a boxer tonight, which he's doing in this round beautifully. And the experience of, of Chitalada must never be discounted. Short uppercut from Slurpy, a beautiful punch. You know, he negated. I hope the judges noticed that, Leroy. Slurpy is fighting an excellent fight here. 
This is one of the best rounds I've seen from Shrimp so far. No doubt about and another it. Another excellent round from Richard Lara. Acknowledge how great a round that was for Shrimp. That was a great round of boxing, Ali, no doubt about it. Shrimp used the jab, he used the hook. And we're looking into the corner of Sotsi Tolado, the champion. And they're working on him frantically there. We're seeing a little bit of the slow-mo now. There we see that excellent Tilado's job. head being knocked back by the shrimp is Ali, they're massaging his legs. They fear a stamina problem. And I suspect the very same thing. Sachi uh, Tolada is a veteran of about 10 years of boxing. Not that he's so old, he's 48 years old. But uh, it takes its toll after that. It takes event. its toll, especially in the lighter weight division. Get the doors! Well, here we are getting set for round eight. And uh, don't forget, Ali, Leroy, Sachi Tolada may have had a weight-making weight problem for this fight. There's no doubt in my mind that he did. Though they said it didn't exist, one learns after watching boxing for a while to know when this is a problem. And even this morning when he climbed onto the scales, the way he approached it tentatively, one knew that he had a problem. And he hit it bang on 112. That is not a man who had no problem. And I think it's going to tail over this next few hours. And there is Shrimpy now. I'm amazed, Leroy. Shrimpy Clark is backing Sacha Tolada up. And that is what he has to do to win. And he has to back him up. The boxer is backing up the baller, the brawler, the aggressor. And you do that with a job. Beautiful left. Two lovely counter lefts. And left hand. Covering beautifully. Well, there's no Shrimpy question about the, the hand speed of Shrimpy Clark oh, and his ability to, to, hit, to hit those hooks uh, from all angles. Never was. And there is Scott trying and Shrimp did very, very clever defensive work there. You know, he learned about the dirty tactics and he's doing something about them. The beautiful defensive work from Shrimp today. And I dare say at this stage that if Shrimpy... Nice right from Chitilada. Chitilada, that's one of those dangerous punches, yeah. Leroy, that overhand right hand lead. And this is why Clark has to keep that left hand out. He held it back just a while ago. He didn't have the power that it didn't, should have. Didn't have full power, exactly, Ali. But I dare say at this stage that if Shrimpy is standing at the end of the fight, he will be the champion. Uh, from what I see, Ali, I have to agree with you. Here's All the job over. again. Here's the job again. And he has to get back to a jabbing mode. Can you see right. that? Yes, right. lovely countering right. Sitalada, though, is a very thinking boxer, and he's going to continue right to the end oh, to try and lure Shrimpy into mistakes. Oh, Sitalada is not only a, a dangerous two-fisted fight, fighter, but a puncher, but he's a thinking fighter. He's a ring-wise fighter. He's a guy who's been through the mill many times. boxer is looking so right now. But as they call him, the Sugar Ray of J.A., and he's really displaying that in no uncertain fashion. He always was, ever since his first four-round fight. <laughs> there we are, simply giving him a taste of his own medicine. <laughs> that we call poetic justice. And I don't think I'm going to win for simply And the crowd is going wild. Tolada once again being massaged practically, as you heard from Hank Kaplan, the possibility of a stamina suspect situation is in effect here because he had some weight problems and he has yet to get to Shrimpy like he would. He has not been dominant at all, Ali. He has tried things and Shrimpy has found an answer most of the time. Well, as was said earlier, Leroy, 
all that we have put in the way of Shrimpy, he has found the answer to. And so far tonight, he has found the answer to Titillada. We have four more rounds to go. The WBC Flyweight Championship of the World. Sam Titillada of Thailand in the green and white trunks. And Richard Shrimpy Clark of Jamaica in the yellow, green, and black trunks. Good combination to the mix section by Clark. Trying to get the jab established once again. It has been the main weapon all night. Titolada being poured with water. Looking quite wet indeed. Most of it is... Oh, there is the jab, jab again. again. Stopping the head back. And I can tell you, Ali, when that jab catches you and strikes that head back, it hurts. You feel it in the face, you feel it in the neck, you feel it in the back. And that's what Shrimpy is doing. Shrimpy Clark, 22 wins, 2 losses, 9 knockouts to his credit. 27 year, years old, Chitilad is 26, very similar record. And there is the jab again, the bread and butter pun. And I'm sure... I'm sure Leroy that uh, Larry Kent, the trainer, must be quite pleased with the performance so far. Oh yes, no Clark. doubt about that. Clark is executing exactly what he was asked to do. No doubt about it. And it, I can tell you, Ali, I'm really pleased with his defensive work. Because after those first rounds, he's not allowing Chitilada to do as he likes with it. He holds close, he stands close. And even tonight is a learning process for Shrimpy Clark. As they say at this stage of the game, Han, uh, Chitilada is going to have to knock out Shrimpy Clark in order to take in, victory. In order to win this fight, absolutely. Ali, a, a, a little item of interest between rounds, I have rarely seen such rubbing down, massaging, and icing down of a fighter as I saw the handlers do on Sacha Delada, which leads me to believe that they, he needs this to invigorate him. And Shrimp's defensive skills has been excellent all evening. He, he has kept the fight at a safe distance. Chitilada has been rendered to uh, lunging in. So far, he's demonstrated the boxing skills of a master. This, is, this had to be Shrippy's masterful performance, the performance of his lifetime, and perhaps we're looking at that right now. But he has to stay focused. Certainly, and uh, again, as focused. you say, the boxing purists will love this kind of a fight. Oh, the boxer puncher. Big Clark is the Sugar Ray Leonard, the Sugar Ray Robinson, the Jeff Driscoll tonight. And Sacha Talata is the aggressive bull against the master boxer. This is the way I see it so far. Now, now we're coming into the 10th round. As I see the round girls, uh, and, and uh, Shrimpy Clark must maintain that same defensive skill, that same uh, caution, and of course, he, he's got, he still hasn't got the fight won, but he has got to show that he wants to be the world champion. He has three rounds left, and, and you know, noticing the, the difference in the corner, the Shrimpy's corner, he's calm, and everybody's methodical. In Sot's corner, they are frantic, and that tells you what's happening in this fight. Well, you always have to give him the puncher's chance because we remember that fight between uh, Chavez Julio and Cesar Taylor, Chavez right. and Melvin Taylor. Absolutely, how well I remember that. And this is why I say Clark, Clark can't get What a careless. performance Taylor gave, <laughs> oh, but for yes. 30 seconds. It was a two seconds rally. Very memorable. Well, this is a, a do or die situation. If Sot doesn't get him in this round, I don't think he will. I expect
expect he's going to try very hard over the next few rounds, Danny. He's going to try for that knockout. I think his corner has told him that. Yeah. One thing he's trying to the short there. uppercuts, the short hooks. Groupie doesn't belong in close range. Sancho Gelada is a desperation fighter right now, and Shrimpy doesn't belong inside in the danger zone with a Sancho Gelada. He should be. All he has to do is at stay outside, keep jabbing, snapping his head back. Jabbing and there's no doubt with the new champion. Giving him angles, not giving the guy a target. A very nice right hook there, and unfortunately, and the second one as well. He's yeah. giving him a target right now. And this is what I'm saying, Clark cannot afford to get careless. The fight is not yet won, as you said, Hank. Absolutely. And he has got to maintain his defensive posture. Absolutely. To use an old cliche, Ali, it's never over until it's over. Yeah. And until How many last times have we heard that saying? Until that last bell ring. I'm sure that Sancho Tolada feels his title going down the drain. And he is a desperation fighter right now. And a very dangerous. Every kind of a punch ever invented. And some that has not yet been invented. Right. I think this has been Sot's best round for a long time. And I think Shrippy has that feeling of machismo. And uh, he should get out of it. He's very too car overconfident and should maintain the same status that he. Right, the opening bell. Start fighting at least three times in that right. Oh. Those are dangerous punches. Oh, yeah. he's catching Shrimpy yeah. Clark. Oh, and that was another low one. Yes, he went below the bed. Yeah. Shrimpy should be at low. Oh, and that's a terrific right. 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 Shrimpy is in trouble. Yeah. He certainly is in trouble. Best down to the fight. No question about it. And he certainly will gain confidence yes. from that. Oh, yes, no doubt about it. And, and Shrimpy glancing over to his corner that time. And Shrimpy Clark is cooperating with him. This is what I don't understand, Ali. Clark has to stay outside if he's He's got the cleverest beat boxing. He should be out of that. That was Sot's best round in a long, long time. And he shook Clark twice and hurt him once. No doubt about that. So he still, as we say, have that punter's chance. And uh, it's never over until it's over. It is not yet over, and I think Clark is going to have to really get back into the mode that he was as we look at the slow-mo of the earlier round, and we will see that right hand, hopefully, of Chitalada coming into play. The trainers from Thailand are massaging Sacha his arms, his shoulders, his abdomen, icing him down, cold water applications. This is going to be a do or die effort, I'm sure. Should this is the Clark. most important round, Hank, yes, of the it fight. Is. Should be Clark. Must be a, you know, whether Clark can come back in, the, in this round. Or whether Clark can pull Chitilada's Ardo and push him back. But there he spun him around and caught him with that left hook again. Clark has to stay outside and jab. Staying inside and doing what he's doing, he's only asking for trouble. There was uppercuts, three uppercuts in the road. And he's allowing the Ruffles tactics to get to him now. Right. I'm surprised the referee took a little right. so long in getting in there. Yeah. And he cautioned Clark. Notice that he's getting tired. Hey, believe me, Clark is getting tired. Clark is getting tired. It's eight, the most important round uppercuts. of the fight. Eight uppercuts. Yeah. Shrimpy Clark has been knocked out, ladies and gentlemen. Call the fight. The uppercuts taking its toll. It was done from before with a right hand. And a great performance up until the time when it ended. The disappointment where the crowd is concerned. Richard Shrimpy Clark not being able to withstand the pressure mounted by such a Delada of Thailand. I don't think, Leroy, he can be disgraced with this performance. No, and there we have it on slow with an uppercut court in. One uppercut, that one missed. I think you'll right count now. eight or nine uppercuts. Yeah, for the uppercuts.
was about eight or nine uppercuts, as you say. Yeah. We knew this was going to be a desperation run. Right. We and said he it. wasn't able we to. We said it. We said it. And unfortunately, he wasn't able to withstand it. He came close. But I don't think he has anything to be ashamed of. No, not at all. He put up a courageous performance. He got caught by one of the best fighters in the world today. And again, Sachi you know, Ali, it reminds us of the Chavez Melvin Taylor fight. Yes, very reminiscent. The pattern was almost the same. And you know what surprised me is that Clark was there looking at the referee. But see many people stood out of focus. No, what happened to him, Leroy? And I'm sure that when we interview him, we will get that. I'm sure he has been disgusted, and I'm not making excuses for, for him. Uh, but he has been showing that disgust with the tactics of Chitalada. Right. And, um, and he wasn't. I have Clark, no I think, ex inexperienced told in the last moment there where Clark was concerned. Well, in the final analysis, I think he got a little complacent. Hank uh, said it earlier. Uh, he thought he had the fight round one Ladies at round and eight. And it, as you said, Leroy, it ain't over until it is over. And in the end, Sotsitalada showing the resilience, the heart of a champion. Sotsitalada taking victory over Richard Trimpy Clark. They say.